So right now I have a custom branch loaded up. It, uh, it has the latest 074 model from Kama and I added the code from the E2E Long 2 branch into this branch. So we're going to go and test out how the model would drive around currently. Now it's not designed for people to, to test out and you know use right now. I'm not even sure if they're optimizing their training for long for like the outputs that the model can give. So it's not perfect at predicting the speed and the acceleration, but we are going to test it out. As you can see, it's brought me down to 33 and speed limit's 45 and it's still predicting 35. We're going slightly faster, but nope, it's bringing us down again. I mean, it's not doing anything unsafe right now, but it's not exactly what a human driver would do. The thing I found most interesting is on roads that are designed to be traveled on at a slower speed, like not highways, not main streets, but with like roads without any lane lines or anything, I've noticed it's super interesting in those situations. Also with traffic lights, it seems to slow down for them, it doesn't stop for them. Uh, that's not a thing that it, it will do currently. But it seems like it slows down at least for them. So we've been going around 35 here for this entire time. There's a green light. And now we're going 32, 31. It seems like it's actually slowing down for them. And let's see if it'll speed up after we get through it. That didn't seem to make the, the difference. But earlier while I wasn't recording, it actually did seem to slow down for a red light and it allowed me to take control as it was decelerating. So it felt like a pretty natural handoff. So we have a stop sign up here. There's no way it's gonna work. It's slowing us down though, which I think is pretty cool. It's actually braking really hardly, but it wasn't gonna stop all the way. And if we engage here, it doesn't, okay. It started out as not wanting to accelerate and then now we're slowly accelerating pretty hardly now. Let's try turning right here and see if it slows enough for us to turn by ourselves. It's braking, it's doing all this. It's braking even more. I made the turn with open pilot engaged. I didn't touch the gas or brakes at all. And it slowed down just enough for me to make that. It even started braking into the turn. So that was really nice. Back there, it felt pretty confident at 27 or 28 miles per hour. But usually, like this, it goes up and down. I can feel the brake actuating like it. it's not sure what speed it wants to be going at. So I hope they figure that out soon. It's probably just optimizing the training data and giving it more data, of course. And now it wants to go 29. It's not slowing us down. There we go, here's the turn, sharp turn. It's making the turn all by itself, but I am gonna have to brake because of the stop sign. Now that actually was, uh, that was really good. I didn't notice anything exceptional with uh, braking there. I think it went a little bit slower, but the steering, that was really cool. It kept us on our side of the road through that entire sharp turn, that was like, 160 degrees on the wheel. Did not appear to slow down at all for this intersection. I noticed near the end there it started to break a little bit, but not enough for it to seem like it actually cared about the intersection. We're about to get on to a, uh, a, a lot faster road. I'm excited to see how it handles an actual highway. Speed limit is 50 here, so let's change that. Okay, finally, it's not braking. It's not bringing us down to 30. It's at least keeping uh, the 45 limit, which is nice. But what I'm really excited to see what happens here is there's a, usually a, uh, an intersection with a red light up here. 
it's turning red for us I can see that now and if it was gonna slow down now would probably be the be a good time for it to slow down it can see the red light with the model I, I, I think so oh wow that was not enough but that was actually slowing us down really well what happens if we engage here okay so we're engaged there's no cars that have us there's a green light Ah, oh, I really thought it was going to start taking off there. That would have been amazing. There's a really sharp curve coming up here. I'm going to set it to around 40. And let's see how it handles the sharp turn. We should be going around 40, 35 to 40 around this curve. Should be fine. And it's taking it at 40. It's not breaking too much, which is nice. Usually it would have done that, but it seems fine. Okay, since we have another red light coming up, all I'm gonna do is get us to where I would start braking and engage. With the brake light turned on back there, that's pretty, that's a really good uh, rate of deceleration right there. We're coming up, it's slowing us down, but, <laughs> Again, not enough. But honestly though, if you were distracted and Open Pilot uh, did have this end-to-end -end long that they added, even if your car started like decelerating for red lights, that would be so much better than just blindly blasting through them. Because if your car starts braking and you're on your phone or distracted with something else and your car starts braking, you're gonna look at the road and see what's going on. Okay, so we were just going around 55 constantly for a minute, and it was okay with that. And now it suddenly slowed me down to 42, and we have a red light coming up. So, I mean, this, I would go this speed right now. This feels very human-like. The thing is, though, we can't see the red light yet because it's not in the model's vision. Now it can, and is it going to slow down? Yes. Oh, okay. I turned on my uh, my blinker. I don't think that makes a difference at all. It doesn't have an input in the model that I've seen for blinker on or blinker direction. But I turned my blinker on, moved to the right and the shoulder to take that right turn there and it slowed me down enough to make that turn comfortably. That was really smooth and I didn't have to uh, disengage open pilot to slow down at all. If you have stock open pilot, with uh, the MPC, it does not do any of that. It will not slow down for anything other than curves or cars ahead of you. So there's no way stock open pilot would have done anything like that. So uh, we could do a quick test to verify that. We could uh, get in the shoulder, we could take control of the wheel and get in the shoulder and see how the speed changes. So I'm doing that now. And I feel it braking a lot more. That wasn't a, a true shoulder, but I did feel it breaking there. Let's get, let's find an actual shoulder and start um, moving into it and see if it slows down because I think that's a, an indicator. So we have a stop sign coming up. It, it's, you can't really see it at all, but there is an intersection and there's lines on the road. So it should be able to take that information and make a decision, but it can't, not right now. But yeah, I think when the model sees people driving off the road, like onto the shoulder and they cross a lane line, I think that's a very clear indicator to the model that the, the driver is about to turn off the road or they're about to take an exit. And it really just makes sense because if the only time you're really gonna go off into the shoulder is if you're gonna make a turn like that. Okay, we're gonna see if it can take this left turn. Okay, the, the it's actually controlling it all by itself. I started the turn, but I let go halfway through the intersection and it completed the turn for me. We're gonna do a lane change here. And it didn't break at all for that. That kind of confirms my thought of 
if the model sees the car driving out of the current lane to the right and there's not another lane uh, after that, then slow down. If not, keep going. Obviously, it's not it's not just logic. It's it's uh it's the model, it's the neural network, but that's a pattern that it could learn. So, I think that's what it's doing, which is pretty cool to be able to see that. Like if I move the wheel to the right like it was turning off, I look at that. It's just, it slows me down. Now this is going to be pretty tough. Uh, we have some really sharp curves here that we should probably be going 20 around. So let's see how it handles long control and these roads. Yeah, it, it, it does that. These curves are so bad. So we have a left turn here and then we have a stop sign a little bit after. I'm going to have to correct for the steering because it, it can't do these on 074 at least. We have a stop sign coming up right here. It can see it, but it doesn't stop for it. Here we have a 90 degree, actually, a left turn coming up, and there's a fence right in front of us. So let's see if it can slow down enough for it to make it. Okay, it's turning, it's doing all this by itself. What just happened? I don't have a arm schwartz code on here so that if the steering rate if the steering rate goes above 100 degrees per second it will cut steering torque so it does get those uh, steering unavailable warnings when it turns super quickly but it has never made turns like that before it's never made that 90 degree left turn i'm gonna take over here it's never done that i'm not even talking about long control. I've set the speed limit to like 10 before and see if it can make that turn and no, the model just can't see that turn coming. That was amazing. Not only did the model correctly predict how fast we need to be going, that was a good speed, but it made that turn 100% and only had the steering fault because of Toyota's limitations at the end of it it actually was smoothly turning into that and here's my home so wow okay